What would you say if a therapist, a mental health professional, someone you trusted told you you were overreacting to anxiety and depression? This is Crap Therapists Say, Vended Light. I feel like you're a little bit riled up about this. I am riled up about this because mm -hmm. I get upset when therapists say hurtful things. It's a blight. It's a blight on the profession and I take it personally and I demand satisfaction. If this therapist were in front of me, I would take my glove off and slap them across the face with it and challenge them to a duel. Well, I, I think it's important to recognize in every profession, there's people who do their job poorly, yes. but it's particularly harmful when it's done in a therapeutic setting yeah. because someone who is hurting is coming for help yeah. And then the person in a position of authority isn't helping their hurting. And and all the self-doubt that inevitably happens yeah. builds. And and then you go to a place of, well, maybe it is really just me. Maybe it is my problem. Maybe it is my fault. And that, gentle viewer, is why we do these Crap Therapist Say videos. We ask our Mended Light community, what's the worst advice you ever got from a therapist? Yeah. And then we try to offer some balm to soothe the wounds that have been inflicted. So we asked the question and here's some of the answers. So first and foremost, when it comes to anxiety and depression, one therapist said, you should really do something about that depression. <laughs> you should really do something about that. And here I thought I was, I thought I was doing something. I thought I was talking to you and I thought you were going to help me. I just love that someone goes to a therapist and says I'm struggling with depression and the therapist's response is essentially, yeah, you should really have that looked at. <laughs> Come on. Okay. You so paid for expensive graduate school. You could do better than that. Okay, so we have a couple crap therapists say about yeah. depression and anxiety. And so another one that kind of goes along with that first yes. one is I had a school-based therapist as a teenager that I was forced to go to who in response to finding out I was self-harming responded, well, everyone has bad days in a tone that heavily implied that I was overreacting and specifically wasting her time. I responded with, well, sometimes I have a good day. So what's your, what's your response to the crap these therapists said? These are getting me so fired up. So it's not even apples and oranges. It's apples and pomegranates. Okay, there's a difference between- Apples and lima beans. Apples and lima beans. Yeah. There is such a huge difference between having a bad day and wanting to self-harm or self-harming mm -hmm. or feeling like just exiting this life. Yeah. And to, to say everyone has bad days is such a downplaying, what's the word I'm looking, condescending. In, invalidating. Invalidating statement. Well, you guys didn't validate my feelings. And that it could come from a human being with a brain is shocking. That it could come from a person who has at least a master's degree and training in this is almost unfathomable. Here's the simple truth. Everything in the DSM-5, which is the big manual of mental and emotional and personality disorders, everything in there is something natural and human mm -hmm. that happens to almost everybody except for it's dialed way, way up. And by dialed way, way up, I mean it impedes your ability to function, to do your work, to enjoy healthy relationships, to get out of bed, to live your life in some yeah. serious way. That's what makes it a disorder. That's why there's a difference between clinical depression and feeling sad. Depression? Isn't that just a fancy word for feeling bummed out? Dwight, you ignorant slut! There's a difference between feeling stressed and or anxious and experiencing anxiety, mm -hmm. right? And a therapist of all people should know the difference. So for those of you who are watching, if you are experiencing anxiety or depression, the weight on you is very real. The strain on you is very real. And for anyone to compare it to the average human experience of sadness or stress. Or having a bad day. Or having a bad day, mm -hmm. way, way missing the mark. Don't give it a second thought. That's just them being ignorant. It has nothing to do with you and your experience. So this reminds me of something you were talking to me about, uh, healthy joining versus unhealthy joining. Yes. And doing that in therapy in a way that's supportive for the person that's coming to see you. Yes. 
So joining is how, how you connect, mm -hmm. how you build a bond. While there are techniques, what matters most is that it's genuine and sincere. And one thing that therapists are trained to do is to connect on shared experiences. Not to say, I know how you feel, mm -hmm. but for example, if I have someone in front of me who's lost a parent, for example, I can say that I lost my mother too and I understand some of what that grief feels like and then they feel like, okay, I've got a kindred spirit who's been there. That's powerful. It's detrimental though when you try and compare your experience to another person's and it's not even in the same ballpark. If I've never self-harmed or had the urge to self-harm and I have someone that comes to me and says that's what they're doing and I say, well, we all have bad days, that is some crap joining. It is not the same thing. Go back to school and open up your office for someone who knows what the hell they're doing. Next. <laughs> well, now that we know how you really feel mm -hmm. about that crap therapy, <laughs> on to the next one. Yay! Who wants to see Jono riled up some more? <laughs> oh, oh, this one was funny. This one was funny. I don't think your problems are real problems. Have you ever tried considering that point of view? <laughs> you serious? And then a therapist minimizing suffering and disabling anxiety and depression saying it's normal. It happens to everyone. Kind of, kind of a thread yeah. here. It's yeah. kind of a common thread. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so one of the greatest things that we learned, uh, you know we have a membership site mm -hmm. right, where we have video courses, where we do live Q&As and a bunch of other things. One of my favorite things that we do on that site yeah. is our podcasts. Yeah. And, and we read meaningful books and then we, healing books. Th therapy related books. And then we discuss them on our podcast and that's part mm -hmm. of the membership site. And two books that we've done, Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl yeah. and The Choice by Dr. Edith Eager, mm -hmm. both of whom are Holocaust survivors, yeah. both of whom became therapists. Mm -hmm. And one of the most powerful takeaways from both of their books is that suffering is suffering. Yeah. Which isn't to say that some suffering isn't greater. Like I, I would never say, my high school girlfriend broke up with me, you were at Auschwitz, I know how you feel, right? It, it's, it's fair to say that some is greater than others, yeah. but it's all suffering. So to say suffering is suffering, so therefore all suffering is valid, yeah. is supportive. To say that all suffering is the same is invalid. Yes. Well, and, and yes, and I feel like if anyone is qualified to say you don't know real problems, it's Holocaust survivors. For sure. Right? For sure. But for them to say what you were just saying, like right. it's all suffering, it's all valid, yeah. is, is so beautiful and compassionate that we don't have to feel like my suffering doesn't matter because other people have it worse. Right. It's, it's not a game of comparison and it's not the Olympics of suffering, yes. right? And you don't need to say, well, just because my suffering isn't as bad as yours, therefore it's invalid. Yes. But that's invalidating your, yourself, but it's extra detri detrimental to have a health professional yeah. say that to you because they should know better Yeah. because that was literally what they were educated about. <laughs> That's presumably what they got the diploma in. For a therapist to say these aren't real problems, have you ever considered that perspective, is such an invalidating thing to say, and it's also a, such a judgmental thing to say. Yeah. Because I can't judge another person's experience, even if I had a similar one on paper. I don't know what it's like here and here for them. You know nothing, Jon Snow. So what you were saying of, we might experience similar things, but they don't necessarily affect us the same way. And that's one of the reasons why I love what we teach in our personalities course, yeah. because someone can go through an experience and if you're a healer personality, it affects you completely differently than yeah. if you're a closer personality, yeah. because you value different things and, um, and you experience it differently. I had one, this conversation with one of my brothers. Uh, we're only two years apart. We grew up very much so in the same house, um, but there were, he, he's a drastically different person than I am. And he is, is a healer dreamer and I'm a thinker closer. And so the emotions of what he experienced, it's not that they affected one of us less or more, but they affected us differently. We had a very real conversation where he was saying, well, 
he was judging himself for how he showed up in his life in his mm. adolescence year, years and into his 20s. And I said, hey, you cannot judge yourself from that place because he was comparing himself to me. And I said, yeah. we might have grown up in the same home and we might have been treated very similarly, but the way it affected you and the way it fa affected me was very different. Yeah. And, it, and it was like, it was like you not having enough oxygen, yeah. you know, and that was not my experience. And that doesn't make us right or wrong. It just makes us different. Yeah. Well, and this reminds me of this moment in Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Harry's godfather, Sirius Black, has just, has just died. And Dumbledore, trying to connect with and console Harry, says, I know how you feel, Harry. Are you dying? Dumbledore is saying this because Dumbledore's lost people. He knows what it's like. Yeah from his experience to lose someone you care about. But it wasn't the same relationship. It wasn't the same two people. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the same s history. I mean, the fact is yeah. you and I could have an almost identical crappy day. Like, um, like right, right. If, if the universe decided to hand us the exact same thing, like flat tire, shirt snags on a, on a nail and, and rips, you yeah. know, kid breaks a dish. Like you, we could have the exact same day, but because of, not just personality, but life experience and what's been happening leading up to that day in our lives, mm -hmm. it's going to be a different experience. So as a therapist, here's what I would say. You know, I've had a similar experience and this is what I felt when I was going through it. Mm -hmm. Is that similar to what you're going through or is it different for you? Because then I get the sweet spot of showing that I care and I'm trying to understand but I'm also not presuming to know where they're coming from. And, and to say it's normal and it happens to everyone, instead of saying that, which is dismissive, I could say something like, you know, the truth is, even though the experience is different for every person, there are a lot of people who experience anxiety and depression and there are some similarities. Mm -hmm. And I feel like what's helped others might help you, though we may need to figure out what's the exact combination of things that will help you through this. Do you mind if I share some of what I've learned with you? That's a helpful way instead of, ah, oh, it's common. Everyone goes through it. Basically, here's the big rule of thumb, whether you're a therapist or just a freaking human being. <laughs> and trying to be a friend. And trying to be a friend. Don't assume. Listen and under, to understand. And if you're going to offer helpful advice, recognize that just because it seems helpful to you, it may or may not be for the other person. Yeah. And above all, practice compassion. So we wanna know, what do you think of the advice that we shared and our mm -hmm. thoughts? And what advice would you give somebody whose therapist minimized their pain? And if you've received poor advice from a therapist, let us know in the comments below and we just may respond in one of our Crap Therapist Say videos. Then and we've got a video when traditional therapy fails that you can watch right here. And until next time, remember to keep shining. We need your light.